Ah, it's you. Where I'm going is hardly your business. Do me a favor and mind your own, won't you? I somehow doubt your sincerity. My intuition says you'll keep nosing into what I'm doing. So, what's your deal? Worried about my well-being? <laughs> That's adorable. I get the sense you're not so hot at assessing people. Just giving you a hard time. Either way, it doesn't matter much to me. There's no slowing me down tonight. I've got important things to attend to right now. There you go with that nose of yours. It still isn't your business. But it looks like you won't let me leave until I tell you. You'll get your way this time. There's a dispute. Or maybe treachery is the more fitting word. Regardless, a purge is required. I see I've got to spell it all out for you. One of my goons double-crossed the gang. He absconded with his boss's small fortune, my small fortune, and buddied up with another gang. Members of the gang are recognizable by their scorpion tattoos. Suffice it to say, they're not a group you want to tangle with. Despite that, I'm not about to just roll over and play dead on this. So I figured I'd pay them a little visit, have a spot of tea with their boss. Makes sense, you know. <laughs> As a former mercenary, I knew you'd get it. You know how things are done in our world. I play my cards wisely. I wouldn't play if there wasn't any hope of winning. It won't be. One false move, and the walls will be painted with blood. Still sound fun. Better head off now. I've got people waiting for me just outside of town. See you around. <sighs> what is it you're after? Money? Me? Or are you just looking for someone to kill? You seem adamant, so I'll allow it. Won't hurt to have backup if things go south. I trust you, for now, but I don't know how reliable you actually are. Just so we're clear, you mess with any of my people, I'll slit your throat without hesitation. Got that? Hey friend. Thanks for joining me when I had to deal with that mess a while ago. You were a real help. I wouldn't say you fully earned my trust, but... You've earned something, for sure. I owe you. I can't not worry about it. I don't like owing people. Guess I'll just have to surprise you someday. I was just rummaging through what we recovered from the scorpions, and I stumbled across something pretty special to me. It was under lock and key, so those thugs probably thought it was something of high value. The Elder gave it to me when I was small. Losing it really got me where it hurts. I guess it couldn't hurt to tell you about it. I can't quite remember how old I was, but my mother had taken in an elderly man wandering the town. He was worse for wear, could barely even walk. She nursed him back to health under a humble roof. In return for her kindly gesture, he taught me to read and write. This notebook is a relic of those times. Not too long after that, I came down with a terrible illness. We had no money to speak of, so a doctor's visit was out of the question. My mother went everywhere asking for help, to no avail. And then the Elder stepped in and saved me. I don't know how he did it, or what it was he did. Could have been. I never knew much about him, honestly. He could have been a mage, a scholar. I haven't the foggiest. 
And I'll never know. Shortly after curing me of my illness, he passed on. Natural causes. My illness, it turns out, was part of a larger plague that swept through our village. So many died. And there I was, having escaped death by some strange luck. I felt grateful. And helpless. So little Yuri figured it would be his mission to help anyone he could as he grew up. However I could. Not necessarily by making gold rain from the sky, but in smaller ways. The streets are filled with kids who have no homes, no food, so many dying of disease, or some cheap medicine would have saved them. I figure, if I can save even one unlucky soul, well, then I'm doing my part, you know? It's a small dream, but it's one I hold in my heart. To help those who need it. It's what my gang's about. When I recruit my people, it's to that end. To give them a home. The turf wars, the gang, all of it. To honor that dream. Yeah? Well, thanks. Despite what you now know about me, I'm still the Lord of the Underground. Don't go forgetting that. I do what I have to, whether people view it as fair or foul. The way I see things, the Goddess gave me two gifts. My life and my charm. That's been gift enough to get in with slimy nobles, so I can pull their strings as I see fit. Of course. It wasn't always easy, but in the end, it's all the same little game. Once I used a clever name, and my charms, to become the attendant to the head slug of a noble house. Yet another time, I took a name befitting the kingdom that landed me in the academy as a noble's adopted son. That's how I've gotten this far and earned my fortune. In doing so, I've spread my wings of protection further to help those who need it most. <laughs> As though I'd tell you, friend. But perhaps you can share what it is you think. Hmm? Looks like I've got them all. Nah. Just wrapped up what I was doing. Need something, friend? Oh, you mean this? I use it to write down the names of everyone I've lost over the years. We lost a lot of lives back in the war. Some of them were only with me a little while. Some of them were family to me. Somewhere along the way, I figured I should record the names of those I've lost. The ones I failed to protect. There's nothing we can do for the dead. Not in this world. Not really, anyway. And it's not like we know what happens after. So writing their names down here, that's all just for me. For the one who's still around. After all, they deserve to be remembered. Even if they're not here to see it. We all shared the same dream. They lost their lives to build that dream. And as their leader, it's on me to remember them, however I can. Oh, you think so, do you? And here I thought I was just the heartless villain in your eyes. Well, anyway, make of my notebook what you will. It doesn't matter much to me. If you go before I do, I'll make sure to add you in here as well. You heard me. I mean, you're not exactly one of my people, per se. At this point, I do have to admit that I... I can count on you. I kinda get the sense that if I hang around you, that dream I've been grasping for will become all the more real. So, do me a favor and don't go dying on me, okay? It'd take a lot to get rid of me, 
I was born under a particularly lucky star. Hmm. Cat got your tongue. Looks like you want to say something, but don't know how. That again? You don't give up easy, do you? All right, all right. I'll toss you a bone. My name's not actually my name. But it's the one I'm enrolled with here at the Academy. The one I've hung on to as the adoptee of House Row. Come to think of it, the last I heard someone use my real name was... <laughs> a very long time ago. From my mom. Who knows? Maybe someday I'll tell you. Perhaps if you decide to pursue that dream alongside me, you'll find out. You came. I'm sure you already know where this is headed. Seriously? I thought you were a little sharper than that. All right, whatever. I'll get right to it. You're the ruler of Fodlin now. That makes you the most powerful person in the world. Next to your brilliance, I'm not much more than a flightless sparrow. All I've got are my dreams, a handful of people working for me, and a pittance of gold. Well, and my undeniable charms, of course. So I've got to know. Is there any room in your bright and shining world for someone like me? <laughs> Always straight to the point with you. I should know that by now. Well, here we go then. I want you to take this. Consider it my token of thanks. A repayment for all you've done for me. If that makes you smile. You backed me up when I needed some help. Even though I wouldn't admit it. Bit of a turf war, if you recall. I always repay what's owed. It's how I sleep at night. But if you really don't need it, I've got another idea. Maybe it's more of an agreement. In return for this ring, I ask for you. <sighs> Don't play coy with me. Or maybe you're just dragging me over the coals for fun. I can't recall how many times others have asked me this. Being the one extending the invite, it certainly isn't easy. I used to feel like saving the life of even one person who needed it would be enough. But I've set my sights even higher. A future in which nobody has to die from something as awful as poverty. I know it's a dream worth reaching for, however grand it might be. And you are truly special. I feel like together that dream could be made a reality. It may never happen, but it's important to try. Anyway, I'm just a person like anyone. I'll die, just like anyone. Whenever that happens, someone will have to take over as boss. I've got that all lined up already. And so long as my people keep living with the same tenacity I've taught them, I've no doubt my dream will live on, whether or not I'm around to see to it. My name might fade into the dust, but my dream will remain. For the longest time, that was more than enough. But now I've come to want something else. When I go, I want someone around to write my name in my old notebook. I can't see anyone else more suited to the task than you. What's wrong? Did I say something strange? I just want to make sure things are set up properly. You never know when it'll be my time. <laughs> I suppose I did just talk a fair bit about death during a proposal, didn't I? Normally, I'm much more charming. I think you get it anyway. So, will you accept my offer? Yeah? Something else you want? Well, you certainly don't forget, huh? I've always kept it private out of necessity. Couldn't have such a secret being spread around, after all. If there's anyone I'll tell, it's you. 
Listen closely now. 